Um, our next teacher made her first Bitcoin transaction in 2012. Is a former biochemist who changed careers in 2013 to become a voice actor and audiobook narrator. She is a host on the Let's Talk Bitcoin podcast and the Proof of Love cast. She's also one of our event MCs. I'm also on the Let's Talk Bitcoin podcast, and we've been working together for many years. And she's also narrated both of my books, The Internet of Money, Volume 1 and Volume 2. It is a huge pleasure to introduce my very good friend uh, and a fantastic speaker and Bitcoiner all around, Stephanie Murphy, PhD. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Andreas. I really appreciate your introduction. Okay, so I am so excited to be here, and I'm so excited that each and every one of you is here. So thank you so much for coming to this presentation. Today, we're going to be talking about something that I like to call crypto for creatives, but it actually goes just beyond that. This talk is about how to incorporate cryptocurrency into any type of small business, even if it has nothing to do with cryptocurrency on its face, especially if it seems to have nothing to do with cryptocurrency. So you might be wondering, am I in the right place? Okay, who is this for? If you are any kind of creative professional, if you're a freelancer, a digital nomad, or any of those you know, things people do nowadays in the gig economy, this talk is definitely for you. Or if you are in any other type of small business, if you provide services like you're an accountant or an attorney, this is definitely for you. And most importantly, your business does not have to be all about crypto. That is like the most important point of this talk. So what are we going to learn today? Why should you care? Why should you even want to try to incorporate cryptocurrency in your business that seems to have nothing to do with cryptocurrency? We're going to talk about how do you incorporate cryptocurrency into any type of small business, and we're going to do a live brainstorming session where we're going to pair up with each other, and we're going to leave with actually action items that you can take home with you and make changes in your business or maybe even start a new business that you never thought of before. Why should you earn crypto instead of just buying it? That's a good question. We're going to answer that. Oh, something got messed up with the formatting, but that's okay. How do you earn cryptocurrency? How do you actually do this? What are the logistics involved? We're going to go over that, and we're actually going to have a, a live demo of how to create an invoice that one of your customers can pay with cryptocurrency. And we're going to go over everyday use cases for crypto. How does a small business owner use cryptocurrency in their small business? How do you do things that you would do every day in your business, like making an invoice, like receiving a payment, like buying goods or services, inventory, paying contractors, that kind of thing? And how do you do accounting for it? I'm also going to just go over some security basics, because you always have to talk about that. I'm not the, the foremost expert on this at this conference. There's many other people here who are talking about the same thing, but it's always important to touch on just the important stuff that's going to affect you that you really need to know. And some people are probably wondering, OK, is this going to be on the test, the certified Bitcoin professional test? Yes. But don't worry, because we're going to go over it. Here is actually an excerpt from the study guide for the Certified Bitcoin Professional Exam. It covers such things as Bitcoin merchants, payment processors, and the secure payment protocol. Uh, describe how merchants can begin accepting Bitcoin for products and services. We're going to cover that. What is a payment processor, and what do they do? And what is the secure payment protocol, and how is it used on the network? We're going to go over all of that today. Oh, the formatting is, maybe I'll have to switch to the PDF. But uh, how can you identify a secure payment compared with a regular one? OK, so here is a little bit about me. What qualifies me to give this talk? Well, I, I'm a voice actor. I narrate audiobooks. I narrate uh, things like YouTube videos. I specialize in medical and scientific material because of my previous background. I didn't go to college to become a voice actor. I didn't really have any formal training except practicing a lot on radio shows and podcasts. I actually used to be in school to become a physician scientist. And this is like a really fancy way with a lot of schooling to say, yeah, I want to try to cure diseases and solve medical problems. But you know, I was, as I was going along in this career path, I kind of just realized that it wasn't that much fun. <laughs> I was actually having a lot more fun uh, when I was in the lab working late and I was listening to audiobooks and podcasts. 
And uh, meanwhile, I, I was so excited about listening to podcasts that I got inspired to start my own podcast. I used to listen to Dan Savage a lot, and he did this like advice show. He's been doing this for like 20 years, advice god. Well, he inspired me to start my own advice podcast, and I did in 2008. And to my surprise, it became somewhat popular. People were starting to listen to it. They were engaging a lot with the show. And at some point, I just kind of realized, you know, like, I feel like I'm living a double life here a little bit. I'm doing this podcast by night, and then during the day, I'm working in the laboratory. I don't know, maybe, it, what if I could just do a podcast full time? That was sort of like my dream. But then I realized also, like, you know, podcasters are not exactly known for uh, having the easiest time paying the bills, right? It's a little bit hard to make that work as a career. I'd had a lot of advice from adults when I was growing up, and they'd say, what do you want to do? And I'd say, I want to be in theater, or I want to be on the radio. And they'd say, don't do that. You'll never make any money. You'll never be able to make it. It's hard to break into the business. You should do something else. You should go into science. You're good at science. You're smart. And I said, okay, yeah, I'm good at science. Maybe I should take their advice. So I did. I became a scientist. But, you know, then I had this kind of career crisis where I realized I wasn't happy. So what I did was I scaled up my podcast side hustle into an actual business. I started volunteering to do podcast intros for a lot of my other friends who were podcasters. I started using online platforms to find voiceover work, sometimes paying gigs and sometimes just, you know, starting out kind of for exposure. And it worked. It totally scaled up. It started to ramp up to the point where I was getting quite busy. And in 2013, I made the leap and I made a career transition to become a full-time voice actor. That was more than six years ago, and I'm very happy to report that it's worked out really well for me. And I love doing voiceover every day. I learn new things all the time. Today I've got over 100 titles on audible.com. And um, actually, a lot of authors at this conference have worked with me to produce their audiobooks. As Andreas mentioned, I did the Internet of Money, Volumes 1 and 2. Also, Pamela Morgan, Crypto Asset Inheritance Planning was another audiobook that I narrated. And uh, Kirk Phillips, the Bitcoin CPA, has a book called The Ultimate Bitcoin Business Guide that's also got an audiobook narrated by me. So I just want to put out a quick plug. I have lots of uh, free copies of my audiobooks available. I'm going to have an opportunity to uh, give away some audiobooks later on in this presentation. So, all right. So now I'm, I'm just kind of curious. Um, I heard from a couple people before this talk uh, that they wanted to come, and everybody had sort of a personal story. But I just want to hear, like, what do, what do people here do? Are you all professionals? Are you, like, accountants and lawyers that are trying to get into cryptocurrency? Is anyone a creative professional? Somebody just call out, what do you do? What, what is your business? Anybody? A podcaster. A podcaster. OK, that's a great one. Anybody else do something like art or photography? Yes? Photography, okay. Anybody, yes? Civil engineering, oh, that's great. Okay, so we have a diverse group, um, and this is excellent because we're gonna be applying what we learn to literally any type of business. Okay, so let's get into the meat of the talk and start talking about why should you want to incorporate cryptocurrency into your small business? What are the benefits to a small business entrepreneur? Well, one obvious one is cash flow. Most small business entrepreneurs struggle with cash flow issues. Sometimes if you're just starting out, maybe you only have one or two clients, you have a big project that you're in the middle of and you haven't finished it yet and you're gonna get paid like after you deliver, maybe like 30 days later, this can really put a squeeze on your wallet. And it can be hard, especially if you're a digital nomad and you're traveling around the world, maybe you encounter banking issues, right? You can't receive a payment from Europe when you're in the US or something like that. It can be kind of a headache sometimes. Cryptocurrency can be helpful in uh, alleviating or ameliorating cash flow issues. And also receiving payments is instantaneous. And so it, it's, it's helpful. I've heard lots of stories of like, you know, somebody launches an online course, right? And they're taking payments for it via PayPal. And the sale is going great, the launch is going awesome, they've sold many copies. All of a sudden, it just stops because PayPal shut down their account because it was suspicious because they're receiving too much money at once. So that can't happen. There's nobody to shut down your account when you're doing a crowd sale or a sale and you're uh, receiving payments in crypto. Another reason is standing out, differentiating yourself, right? You can actually add a lot of value by combining your knowledge of crypto with anything that you do. 
Uh, for example, you know, we had Kirk Phillips this morning giving a talk, the Bitcoin CPA. If he didn't know about crypto or if he didn't brand himself as the Bitcoin CPA, he would just be a CPA, right? <laughs> he, he might not even be the CPA because there's millions of CPAs, right? <laughs> but because he's the Bitcoin CPA, that's really memorable, right? He, it stands out from the crowd. He's the first person you think of when you think of, okay, who am I going to call to get help with my crypto accounting and tax questions? So that's a very successful example of branding. And if you can brand yourself in your industry in that way, you're going to really stand out from the crowd. Another thing is making it easy for your customers to pay you, right? Customers want to give you money. So sometimes like when you especially when you're offering a really valuable service or something really unique, they're like, "Shut up, take my money. I just want what you have to offer." Okay, but you have to make it easy for them to pay you if you're going to get paid. And so, yeah, you know, credit cards are pretty easy to pay. PayPal is pretty easy to pay. But sometimes cryptocurrency can be even easier, or it can be just another avenue that you can offer in order to accept a payment. And customers like that. Some customers really want to spend crypto, just going back to this point. You know, sometimes uh, customers have crypto to spend, right? And they, it's burning a hole in their pocket, right? And so if you give them a place to spend it, you could be the early bird that catches the worm. OK, so let's go on to how do you actually do this, right? You might be sold on the benefits of incorporating crypto into your small business, but how do you actually fit it together, right? Especially if your business seems to have nothing to do with crypto. Well, you got to think outside the box. <laughs> and that's what we're going to do here today. So in order to get your brain creative juices flowing, I'm going to do a couple of case studies, and I'm going to talk about how a couple of small business entrepreneurs that I'm familiar with incorporated crypto into their businesses. This is often really helpful in brainstorming for your own. So as you watch these case studies, I want you to think of how you could generalize these principles and maybe fit this in with your business and copy the, what these people did. OK, so the first one is me, because <laughs> it's my talk. So, I started my business in 2013 as a voice actor and a podcast host. And I right away, I made crypto part of my content. I was talking about cryptocurrency even on my relationship advice show. It seems to have nothing to do with it. But this led to a podcast gig with a little podcast that was starting up. At the time, it was called The Daily Bitcoin Show. And then it became Let's Talk Bitcoin. And I was asked to be part of the crew. And I've been there for six years as part of the uh, Let's Talk Bitcoin podcast. And also people, you know, people got to know me as like, oh, this, this girl does a podcast and she talks about cryptocurrency. That's interesting. That's, remember we talked about the branding before and differentiating yourself? This was one way that I became known. Um, another thing that I started doing really early on was just putting an address out there and accepting tips or donations. You know, a lot of podcasters have a tip jar. Usually they run it through PayPal. But if, you, if it's as easy as just copying and pasting a, an address in text format and putting it in your show notes or on your website, why not? I mean, I did that and I started getting donations right away. Um, I also began accepting cryptocurrency for, uh, as payment for services. In my case, it was selling voiceovers. And um, I had a couple of clients right away at the very beginning who wanted to hire me and they wanted to pay me with crypto. And they were excited about that because for some of them, that was their first chance for them to ever really buy something or pay, pay for a service, like my voiceovers, with crypto. And also, I made, uh, you know, I've made this part of my work. I've got several audiobooks that are cryptocurrency related. I've narrated lots of explainer videos about crypto. And uh, my voice is actually going to be in a cryptocurrency documentary that's coming out in 2020. Watch for that. <laughs> it's called Cryptopia. OK, so <laughs> you guys might recognize this GIF. Does anyone, has anyone seen this before, this Bitcoin roller coaster GIF? Yeah. So um, this was drawn by a really interesting guy. Uh, my friend Marcus. Marcus is a really interesting dude. He's a very creative person. For 10 years, he drew a daily web comic called Brainless Tales, and he just drew a different picture every single day, and he put it out there on the internet. And then some of them flopped, of course, right? But some of them went viral, and this was his most viral design. It started off as just a still picture with the Bitcoin riding a roller coaster and going like this. 
And then um, somebody, you know, somebody kind of like tilted it on its side and photoshopped it when Bitcoin was like eh, taking a nosedive <laughs> really bad and the Bitcoin was going down. And then they also modified it to, you know, have it going up. And Marcus said, well, why don't I just turn it into a GIF? So he did. And, and then you say, well, okay, but how did he like make any money off of this, right? Was it just people aping his design? No, actually, he set up a whole website, which I put a screenshot there. He's got merch, he's got t-shirts that have this design on it. He has a 3D printed uh, desk statue of this Bitcoin roller coaster uh, that you can purchase on the website. And you know, he really made this a part of his art and then he spun it off into several different products. He also accepted donations and I put comedy in here because I think he, this was so successful because it really empathized with people. It really captured the comedy of the whole situation where if you're involved with crypto, you know it feels like you're on a roller coaster. And so he captured that and he put it into a very successful meme and he's doing pretty well with it. Um, another case study I have is Melissa. Melissa was uh, doing some contract work for me, doing editing and uh, proofing for my audiobooks. And she's a digital, she's like your classic digital nomad. What she wanted to do was go backpacking through Europe, work on farms, not really earn very much money. She wanted to go to like silent meditation retreats, and she was kind of going off the grid. And so that includes, you know, not really interfacing that much with the banking system if she can help it. And she was also going from America to Europe, which can cause some banking issues sometimes. And so what she did was she did some contract work for me. I paid her in Bitcoin and she was able to hodl and then leverage the value later on and basically pursue her dreams as a digital nomad with that. So hodling is one strategy that you can use as well. Another case study, um, Matthew is a person I worked with uh, doing some voiceover, like duet voiceover. And uh, he's a permanent traveler. He lives on a fixed budget from uh, traditional investments, but he's also really interested in cryptocurrency. And he was sort of starting a hobby podcast about crypto news. And what we did was um, we were working together and he needed to record something. And he didn't have a very good home studio recording setup. So he went into an actual recording studio and he rented studio time at this really high quality mic. And then I paid him in crypto as a reimbursement for his studio time. And so this was interesting because this was actually, he was sort of buying crypto, but indirectly as a reimbursement. And he felt like this was maybe lower risk, right? Like he's just sort of accepting a little bit here and there. He was dipping his toe into the water. And this enabled him to get started with crypto, hang on to it. And since he was on a fixed budget, he didn't really have much to play with, but he was playing with the reimbursement and with his investing basically with his labor into crypto. Um, here's another case study. You, some of you might know Tatiana. She's part of the Let's Talk Bitcoin network. and. Uh, a friend of mine, she's a singer-songwriter, and she's gone all the way with this. She found out about crypto early on, and she incorporated it into her songs, into her music. She also created an artist token that was redeemable for her albums and stuff like that with, uh, with uh, Token Lee. And also she does podcast content about cryptocurrency. She's also paying employees and contractors in crypto. Uh, another case study, David is a video game designer, and he features cryptocurrencies in his video games. Anytime there's an in-game currency, it's not like you're actually depositing Bitcoin into the game or something like that, but any kind of unit of account within the game is denominated in cryptocurrency. So it's sort of like a little subliminal message getting people used to, hey, these games take place in the future. In the future, this is how people are gonna keep track of money. He also did um, a crowdfunding and took pre-orders for one of his games, and he uh, accepted crypto for that and hold on to it and then was able to leverage uh, the power of the crypto when it went up later to uh, invest back into the development of his game and make it an even better game. And he also paid a contractor in crypto. That was me, I did a voiceover for, for the game. Okay, so after seeing these case studies, I want everybody to think about how can you put some of these strategies into practice in your own business? And since sometimes it's hard to think about ideas for yourself. Sometimes, some people have a creative block when it comes to their own business, but if you hear your neighbor's story, you might be able to think of something that they could do for their business. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is think about how you could incorporate crypto into your business. Come up with at least one way that you could combine 
crypto with your business or your side hustle or your project or whatever in a surprising, unusual way. And then also pair up with someone around you if you want to get some help and ask them what they do and then come up with one of these strategies that maybe they could incorporate into their own business. And I'd love it if you guys would write this down so you have something to take home with you. And I've put a cheat sheet up here of all the things that I talked about just now. So here are some of the things that you could do to incorporate crypto into any type of business. You could accept tips. You could accept payments. You could accept reimbursements as part of crypto. You could make it a part of your story, never touching it, but just talking about it, producing content about it. You could add value to any kind of service that you offer, like the Bitcoin CPA, for example, with uh, your knowledge of crypto, by combining your knowledge of crypto with what you already do. You could utilize tokens, tokens redeemable for some, some of your goods and services, or access to uh, your community or something like that. Your business can basically invest as a business in cryptocurrency and HODL. <laughs> you can save your crypto and use it later, maybe with increased purchasing power for your business to, you know, to make it better. You can also buy stuff with crypto. If, you get, if your business is taking it in, you can buy supplies, inventory, anything you want with crypto. And we're gonna talk about how to use that later to get discounts and to uh, fully leverage the power. So take two minutes, Come up with one way that you can incorporate crypto into your own business or side hustle or project. And then turn to your neighbor, ask them what they do, and come up with one way that your neighbor can incorporate it into their business. And we're just going to take a couple minutes and break out now. So do this right now. And then I'm going to ask what people did. Maybe we can go to Slido and do that. OK, I want everybody to write down your ideas. And we're going to come back to the talk. So. I want to hear something that somebody came up with. What is your business in one or two words, and how are you going to incorporate cryptocurrency? Somebody volunteer? Yes. So I first tried to post this for cryptocurrency conferences All right, so okay, so just uh, for the video later, I'm just going to repeat the, uh, the comment. Uh, this person runs a co-working space for Bitcoin-related companies or crypto companies and was thinking about making music, uh, songs for the revolution, and uh, accepting crypto for it. So great idea. Anyone else? Agoras Primer? That's OK. <laughs> and anyone else want to share an idea about how they came up with uh, they can integrate crypto into their business? Yes? Do you know if there's a Patreon with crypto? There, if there's a Patreon with crypto. Oh, yes. Yeah, so the question is, is there a, some, a Patreon alternative that uses crypto? Um, I know of actually a couple. Um, there's one called Libra Patreon, which is in development, and I believe that's an open source project, which does have a crypto angle. There was also um, Bitbacker is another Patreon alternative that uses crypto. I think the development on Bitbacker is on hold at the moment, uh, but please look into those. And you know, I'm sure as time goes on, there's going to be more alternatives, because there's definitely a demand for this kind of thing. OK, one more? Yes? Yes. I love nonprofits, actually. I, this is very good. I'd like to be able to uh, pay some expenses in the future, but I want to hire other people. So I, I want to do it that way. So my, I have trouble finding an audience for, for, for this particular perspective I have. Um, and, and I like the, the crypto branding that anybody Great. Oh, thank you. We have an audiobook fan in the audience. <laughs> so the comment was uh, starting a nonprofit and incorporating crypto into the nonprofit in order to, as a differentiating factor, and maybe to reimburse volunteers or things like that. Yes.
Well, I think you can do that. And uh, great, great start. Everybody, I want you to write down your ideas so you don't forget them. And we're going to leave, leave here today with uh, lots of ideas. OK, so we're going to move on to the next part now. And that is, why would you want to earn crypto, right? Most small businesses are in it, unless it's a nonprofit, but nonprofits also have to sustain themselves and to be um, viable for the future. So why would you want to earn crypto instead of just buying it and investing in it? Now, I want to be clear, of course, just, just investing in it with money, is a, with dollars, fiat money, is a, a perfectly fine way of uh, dealing with crypto and, and making it a part of your life. But there's some special benefits to actually earning it as opposed to just buying it. And one of those is that it's, le it's less intimidating for some people. For example, there are a lot of people who are maybe newbies to Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, and they're like, well, do I have to buy a whole Bitcoin? You know, <laughs> do I need to spend $20,000 or $10,000 to, to buy a whole Bitcoin? And of course, the seasoned, you know, experienced Bitcoiner says, no, of course not. You can buy fractions, right? I saw a guy yesterday at this conference that had a shirt that says, Psst, you can buy a fraction of a Bitcoin. And that's really true. But people are intimidated, right? They're like, I don't know if I want to invest in this? What if it goes down? What if I lose my money? This seems kind of risky for some people. And I get it, you know, volatility is not always something you want to deal with. If you have, uh, you know, a fixed budget and you don't have much room to play around and you have bills coming every month and you want to make sure you can pay your bills, you want your business to be solvent. Sometimes you don't want to deal with a lot of volatility. But for some people, it's a lot less intimidating for them to, for example, trade an hour of their time and get paid some amount of cryptocurrency than it is to take $100 or $50 or something and trade that for cryptocurrency. It's, a, it's sort of a psychological barrier because even though they would charge their client that much for the service they're providing, in their mind it's sort of fungible. Maybe it doesn't really, it, they feel that it doesn't really cost them that much. They're charging the client based on the value they provide to the, to the client. But for them, it's sort of like less costly or it doesn't cost as much energy to provide their service and then turn it into crypto. So it can be less intimidating for some people. The barrier to entry gets lower. Low friction, right? Um, we talked about the difficulty sometimes of receiving international payments or from clients around the world. You know, it's really easy to receive crypto. It's literally just like as easy as receiving an email. In fact, you can do it over email. Regularly, when I have clients that pay me with crypto, I send them an email, I put an address in the email, and then they send it a few minutes later when they receive the email. Boom, done. It's, it's quite easy, even if they're halfway across the planet. There's also a privacy advantage to earning crypto, right? You don't, ha you, you don't have to know even who's paying you, right? You can accept an anonymous tip from someone on the internet. It doesn't matter who it is. You don't need to know their name, their address, anything, unless you're shipping them a physical product, right? And even then, you can, you can potentially put in a fake name and, and just an address. Um, also, you know, the, um, the, if a company is paying their employees with uh, crypto, they don't have to hang on to as much data, right? About, they don't have to hang on to all this account data. I, wrote the, I read this blog post from Edge who pays their employees and contractors with cryptocurrency. And they were saying, like, this actually saves them a lot of hassle in their accounting department because the only personal data on their employees they really need to hang on to is for tax purposes. It's not for the purposes of being able to pay them. And their employees can kind of change that around. So there is a privacy advantage to earning crypto. Another reason is to contribute to the crypto economy and spend it later. If you're excited about cryptocurrency, then participate in it, right? Pay it forward, right? Have your business take in crypto and then pay a contractor with it. Spend it to buy inventory or to buy other services. You can participate in the crypto economy by being a business that is open to dealing in it. Okay, so hopefully you're sold at this point on that this is a great idea and this gives you a lot of benefits as a business owner. How do you actually do it, though? How do you get started? If you've never had your business touch crypto, how do you, it can be a little bit intimidating. So we're going to go over really, really step by step. How do you get started? OK, so one way is to accept it as payment for goods and services. This is quite obvious, right? Most every business sells something. Um, a nonprofit, OK, they're not really selling anything, but they are accepting donations for, you know, 
for, to enable them to continue to exist and for the services they provide. So you can always uh, accept crypto as payment for something that you sell. You can also take reimbursements in crypto. This is a great way for uh, even people who volunteer. Say you volunteer for a nonprofit and your nonprofit takes crypto donations. Well, the nonprofit might have to buy supplies, like for example, first aid equipment or literature or, you know, who knows? And sometimes volunteers are actually buying that stuff out of pocket and then receiving a reimbursement from the charity or, fi or um, nonprofit organization. So you can take your reimbursement in crypto if you want to get started with uh, having some in a way that's kind of like lower risk or easier, lower friction. You can also invest your business income into crypto. If you're, if you're someone who likes to hodl, you can just hold on to it and then maybe you can use it later. Maybe that'll give your business a boost down the line. Um, another way is to offer a discount. So this goes under kind of differentiating yourself. Um, at the beginning of my voiceover business, I really wanted crypto clients that would pay me in crypto because I just thought this was so cool and exciting and I wanted to show my excitement. And so I actually offered a discount to any of my clients who would pay in crypto. And it makes sense to do this because you actually save on credit card processing fees if you're not dealing with the credit card system. You save on potentially the hassle of banks and stuff like that. So you can offer your customers a discount if they pay you in crypto, and this will encourage people to find you and seek you out. Um, differentiating yourself as someone who's interested in crypto projects, this is something that I did, you know, just by having audiobooks and videos out there that are about crypto, I get sort of a reputation as, hey, this person is a voice actor who's interested in crypto, and whoever's looking for that in the future is going to find me pretty easily. And then add value to what you already offer by incorporating your knowledge of crypto. So this is great for um, professionals like accountants and attorneys and tax professionals, even for nonprofits. Use platforms. So a lot of freelancers use platforms to find work. These include things like Upwork or um, what's the other one? It starts with an O. I'm sorry, I can't remember it. But as a voice at Odesk, yes, thank you. <laughs> and um, you know these platforms can be great for freelancers and digital nomads finding work. Um, as a voice actor, I do use platforms sometimes to find work. These include things like Voices.com, Voice123, and ACX, the Audiobook Creation Exchange. You can go on these platforms and put in your profile or bio, I like cryptocurrency. Please, let's, if you're interested in that, let's do a, you know, let's correspond with each other by email and we can work out a payment in cryptocurrency. There are also specific platforms for people who want to work for cryptocurrency. And um, I think there's one that's associated with the conference where there's a job board that you can check out. Um, that one was new to me, but there used to be kind of like Upwork for crypto. So I'm sh those platforms are out there. They're going to be continuing to be out there. I haven't had much luck with those uh, per se. I just use the traditional voiceover platforms. And then I put in my bio something like, I like cryptocurrency. And I've had a lot of clients find me that way just because I put the keyword in there. OK, so we're going to go into how do we actually use this every day? And we're going to do an, a demo of creating an invoice. Now, let's do a, a little show of hands. So true or false? <laughs> um, if you want to accept crypto payments, you have to use a crypto payment processor like Coinbase or BitPay. Raise your hand if you think that's true. Oh, okay. None of you guys are all very smart. <laughs> so that's absolutely false. You do not have to use a payment processor in order to accept crypto payments. And we're going to actually go through an example of how you can use your, your very own wallet software on your own device to accept a crypto payment directly. And of course, you can use this for receiving payments or, or purchasing stuff. And we'll go a little over accounting, too. So OK, we're going to go over how to receive directly to a, a crypto wallet first. And our example wallet is going to be Electrum Wallet. So Electrum is a, a, a wallet software that works uh, for Bitcoin. And um, this is just going to be a prototypical example. I really like this wallet. It runs on mobile and uh, desktop. And I have some screenshots here of how to create an invoice with Electrum. So the first one, this is just uh, you know the, the basic wallet, what happens when you open the software. Up here, you're going to go to Receive. And then it gives you an address and a little QR code. You can put in a label for your transaction. And it's a good idea to label everything so you don't get confused and you know who paid which invoice and so forth. 
right? And you can put in the amount if you want to, or you can leave it open. If you're just receiving a tip, you could just you know, leave it open. And I'm sorry, I can't see what this says. So I circled it in orange, the important part, okay, folks? Received, Received yes. Okay, so now we're gonna create an invoice. And uh, when we label it, it's gonna pop up down here as a pending uh, invoice. And then we go to our, uh, our list of addresses, and we can see right now the balance is zero, so this has not yet been paid. But, but when we bring up the invoice again, when someone pays it, I paid it from another device, click send, suddenly we pop up a, a notification that says, oh, you have just received the amount of this invoice. And then it shows up in your list of addresses with the balance in the address that you uh, tied to the invoice. Okay, so that's how you receive a payment just using your wallet software, nothing else to it. Now, how would you add a crypto payment option to a traditional invoice? A lot of freelancers or you know, people who do kind of like what I do, we're sending invoices with fresh books or we might even be using like a PDF invoice, right? You can add a crypto payment option to those very easily and you don't need to use a payment processor. So how do you do that? Well, you can literally just copy the, <laughs> the address, the text field, and then you can put it in the payment notes. To pay with crypto, please send it to this address. Okay. You can also create a payment request. So you can create like a text-based string that show, tells your customer how to pay it. This is, I think, a, a URI. Or you can create a QR code, and you just take that QR code, put it on your traditional invoice, your customer can scan it, and they can pay you that way. And of course, if you're using a point of sale system, this is made even easier. Like this payment processors will walk you through all of this. I'm just saying, you know, if you're a service provider and you're using invoices through a service like uh, FreshBooks, this is how you can add a crypto payment option to your traditional invoice. Okay, uh, there's also, I think this is the uh, BIP70 uh, pr payment protocol request. So, oh. I kind of skipped over that, but you can also create one of these requests. And what that does is it just kind of locks in the, the address and the amount that you're sending to to prevent human error in entering the transaction details. Okay, so there are also a number of Woo, WooCommerce plugins. Since I like talking about open so source software, I, I'm a huge fan of WordPress. I love WordPress. And WooCommerce for WordPress is uh, the very popular shopping cart software. Um, there are several Bitcoin payment plugins for WooCommerce. And what you can do with those is you can actually take an Electrum wallet or another wallet that has an extended public key. An extended public key is uh, a public, uh, it basically gives a list of all the addresses in a HD, hierarchical deterministic wallet, the public addresses, so that you can receive payments to multiple different addresses within that wallet. And what that does, if you put it into the, the WordPress plugins, is they'll just, every time they create an invoice, it'll be linked or sending the payment to one of the addresses in your HD wallet that you gave it this extended public key for. Uh, a lot of people also like this Go URL, Bitcoin payment gateway, BitPay for WooCommerce, and there's many other plugins. But the point is, the point that I really wanna drive home here is that you don't need to rely on a payment processor like BitPay or Coinbase. You can actually do this all open source, you can have a lot of control over the process. And you can do it directly to a wallet on your desktop. Okay, so you can also use a payment processor and there's also uh, POS point of sale solutions. POS stands for point of sale, right? There's a lot of jokes about that, but this is for like restaurants or something where customers are paying at the location. Usually what they'll do is they'll have some kind of a, a tablet and the invoice will come up on the tablet and the, the uh, server brings over the bill and the customer scans a QR code and there you go, it's done. Okay, you can also receive tips very easily by just literally listing an address and nothing more. And then you don't know who's paying you, it's very beautiful, anonymous. You can also use a plugin to receive tips, but you don't have to, you can just put up, put up an address. But be mindful of privacy because if you're putting a tip address on something that you create, everyone's gonna know that you own that address. So just be aware that this is linked to your real world identity or your online presence. 
Okay. And so another way to use crypto is paying for goods or services. Um, you can pay employees and contractors. I was just reading this uh, blog post by Edge, and they, they're, they're sponsoring, they're at this conference, um, and they pay their employees and contractors in Bitcoin. And they were pointing out in this post that some people are, are saying, well, what about the volatility? How can you pay someone in such a volatile asset? Well, that's true, right? But the, the Latin root word of volatility is volare, which means to fly, right? And so your money could fly. <laughs> it could tank too, but it could fly. So, you know, that's, that's a risk that any individual really should be able to decide whether they want to take. Um, but if you're paying for something with Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, you can ne always negotiate a discount. This is a valuable thing. People want it. You know, if you're paying someone, ask, for, ask if they offer a discount. Um, if you're purchasing goods or supplies for your business, you can use purse.io. You can buy pretty much anything on Amazon with, uh, <laughs> with Bitcoin through purse. You can also negotiate directly with your suppliers and make sure to ask for a discount by using crypto. And then there's also these cards and collateralized loans. I'm not going to spend too much time on these. I will say that these are not a really great option unless you have a lot of trouble obtaining credit from traditional lenders. Um, so accounting. We have to talk about accounting. We're short on time. But I want to recommend anyone who's watching the video of this talk later, uh, Kirk Phillips gave an awesome talk today at BTC 2019 uh, where he talked about accounting for crypto transactions. And he also has this book called The Ultimate Business, Bitcoin Business Guide, which has an audiobook narrated by me. And um, if you go to my website, it's smvoice.info, you can request a free copy of this audiobook and I will email it to you. And I'll have my contact info at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the talk. So basically for accounting, you want to just make sure you label everything because that makes it easier in the long run. Keep track of the value you accepted the crypto asset at. Was it a payment? Was it a reimbursement? Write that down in your address label field. Keep a, keep a journal. Um, and then keep track of any gains or losses if you sell it later. It's really that simple. That's, the, that's how you do accounting for cryptocurrency. Maybe a little extra work, but also extra benefits. Okay, and so now, little basics of security. Um, I would like you to see Joshua McDougall's talk and also Pamela Morgan's talk at, the, uh, at this conference. These are gonna tell you about cre secure key creation, about uh, multi-sig and why it's important, why this is actually great for a business and for continuity of assets. And um, hardware wallets are a great solution that balances security and usability uh, for many people. Um, Okay, and we're gonna gloss over this. And you know, your business, everyone's business is different, but you're gonna definitely need to pay attention to your email security. I've heard of phishing attacks where somebody sent an invoice to someone and said, oh, you know, this is for the conference you're organizing, you need to pay it, and it was actually a phishing attack. So, and of course, if your email is linked to maybe accounts that you might have online, you need to make sure that's protected. Use two-factor authentication. Be mindful of physical security, but most attacks are gonna come online. Okay, so we're gonna get to your action plan. I would like everyone to leave with one way that they came up with they can incorporate crypto into their business and what tools they're gonna need. So are you gonna need a WordPress plugin? Are you gonna need a, uh, a hardware wallet? Are you gonna need wallet software like Electrum? Are you gonna need traditional invoicing software, a payment processor? And then what, what did your neighbor come up with? Write that down just for the heck of it, no matter what they said. And then what steps are you gonna to take to get started with this? So I want everybody, if you didn't write it down earlier, I want you to take a minute to just write down your plan and what are you gonna to do today or as soon as you get back in order to get started with rolling crypto into your existing business or your idea for a business? Okay, and finally, just to go over the Certified Bitcoin Professional exam uh, study points, how can merchants begin accepting Bitcoin for products and services? We covered that. You don't need to use a payment processor, but you can. What is a payment processor? What services they provide? They basically make it so that if you don't want to, you don't have to touch the crypto. They receive the payment and they deposit fiat money into your bank account. You can also use payment processors to receive crypto payments directly into a, a crypto wallet, but you don't have to. Uh, and then what is the secure payment protocol and how is it used? It basically just locks in the address that you're paying to and the, uh, the amount to make it, uh, to eliminate errors in pay, paying, paying for something through a merchant. 
And how can you identify secure payments? Well, the amount and address are filled in when you click on it. Okay, and my time is up. Thank you so much for coming. I want to take questions, and I want to let everyone know, please connect with me. Um, I have uh, business cards available, my website, smvoice.info. You can always email me to request a copy of any of these audiobooks and check out my podcasts and audiobooks. Thank you so much. <laughs>